Hey everyone, Jake here for American Trucks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to choose a new exhaust system for your five liter F-150. A new exhaust is often one of the first things an enthusiast does to their truck. I'll admit, I am totally guilty of looking up exhaust for a car or truck before I've ever even taken a test drive. Exhausts are a pretty simple way to personalize your truck without having to make permanent modifications. Plus, it can make a big difference in your driving experience and in your overall enjoyment of the truck. The five liter Coyote V8 has been in the F-150 for a while now, and I think we can all agree that it is a great sounding engine right out of the box. But there's always room for improvement. So we're gonna be taking a look at a variety of different sound profiles, materials, and layouts of exhaust for your five liter F-150 to help you choose which system is gonna suit you best. Now, all the information we're gonna be covering, the layouts, the materials, etc., will all be applicable to all generations of F-150 that were available with the five liter Coyote V8 and all of these systems are cat back too, meaning that they keep your factory emissions systems in place. They're just gonna change up the sound and the look of your truck. Now the first and perhaps the biggest thing on any buyer's list when it comes to an exhaust system is the sound. And contrary to what you may have seen or heard out on the road, not every aftermarket exhaust is ridiculously loud. There are plenty of options at different sound levels from just beyond stock all the way up to absolutely bonkers. So let's start by looking at a more subdued system, the Borla Touring Dual Rear Exit. Take a listen to how this one sounds. Now this system has a mellow, more subtle tone to it. We'd rate this one at about a two out of five on our loudness meter. Now Borla keeps this one a little more under wraps by including a large suitcase style muffler and a resonator in the system. So it's similar to your stock system. However, the muffler has less baffling and a higher flow perforated core to it. And that resonator is also more free flowing than your stock system. So this is gonna allow more of that sound to come through. But the presence of that resonator and the baffling inside the main muffler helps keep the sound at bay making this system an excellent choice for a daily driven truck or one that maybe hauls around the family a lot more often. Like all of Borla's systems, this one keeps things a bit more subdued inside the cabin as well, and it takes advantage of their trademarked polyphonic harmonizing technology. That means this one in particular has no drone at all, so it doesn't get that thrumming noise that can sometimes happen with an aftermarket exhaust system. So this will make for a pleasant but still noticeable increase in volume inside as well. You won't have to shout or make other compromises to enjoy this system on a daily basis. Taking things up a notch is the Magnaflow Street Series Dual Middle Side Exit. Here's how this one sounds. Now, as you can already tell, this one is a bit louder than the Borla and it has a slightly more aggressive tone to it. So this one gets a three out of five on our loudness meter. And you can certainly hear a more stark difference versus the stock system or even the Borla that we were just looking at. And while this one is a step up from the Borla, I would still call it rather mild. It's a bit of a smaller system overall and it doesn't include a resonator, just a larger suitcase type muffler. So similar to the Borla, the muffler in this system is more free flowing than your stock one but it does have quite a bit of baffling in there. It's a great balance that will again be a good choice for a daily driver, just one that's maybe a bit more on the aggressive side. Now, as with any aftermarket exhaust, if you increase the volume outside, that will translate to more volume in your interior. Like the volume outside, this one is gonna be a bit louder inside versus stock or even the Borla we just looked at. However, there is nothing here that would keep you from driving this exhaust every day or on long trips. It's just gonna have a bit more volume and much more pronounced growl when you're cruising along. Turning up the volume even more is the Roush single side exit exhaust. Here's a quick sound clip. Now, as you can tell, this one is even louder than the last two and it sports a more aggressive tone to go along with it. So on our loudness scale, this one is gonna get a four out of five. This is one of the louder options out there, though not quite the top of the scale. 
Don't worry, we'll get there. Now, Roush's exhausts are known for being a bit more unhinged, and this one is no exception. Like the Magnaflow, this one only has a muffler and no resonator. So that muffler is smaller, it's a canister style, and it's pretty much straight through. Now, there's a lot less to this muffler versus some of the others we've just looked at, so inherently, this one is gonna be louder. Canister style mufflers are usually some of the louder ones you'll find out there, especially one that's on the smaller side, like we find on this Roush system. This one is gonna let a lot more of the Coyote trademark yowl through. It gives you a deeper, more rumbly sound, something more akin to a muscle car, which is appropriate given the Coyote's roots in the Mustang. This one gives some barks and pops out of the tip, so it's really a treat for your ears. But again, just know it's gonna be significantly louder than your stock system. And as opposed to the other systems we've seen thus far, that does mean that this Roush one is gonna have a more significant increase in interior volume. Prepare to speak up a bit or turn up the volume on your favorite song. Now it's far from intolerable, don't get me wrong, and if you like to really hear the coyote howl, this is a great choice that's not gonna go completely over the top. When you're cruising around at lighter throttle applications, this one is actually quieter than you might expect, but when you're accelerating, even just gently, this is really gonna kick things up. But if you want all out noise, you're gonna need to take a look at something even more aggressive, such as the Borla Attack dual rear exit exhaust. Here's a quick sound clip. Now this one is about as loud as you're gonna get short of a plain old straight pipe or just dumping the exhaust right out of the manifolds. And that comes with its own sets of complications. But that means that this one is gonna get a full five out of five on our loudness meter. If you want some serious bark, a system like the Attack is the way to go. Again, it's about as close to a full on straight pipe as you can get with a full cat back. No getting around it, this one is loud. So this is gonna be for the person who wants it boisterous and loud all of the time. The echo of that coyote engine howling off the barriers of the highway everywhere you go or bouncing around in a tunnel. Something at this sound level is not gonna be the most pleasant for longer drives, but it is gonna make it sound really, really good. Just prepare yourself for a lot more noise in the cabin versus what you get stuck. Borla again here includes their polyphonic harmonizing technology to ensure that despite the increase in volume and the much more aggressive tone, you're not gonna get any drone coming in as you drive. Now construction is also key in choosing your exhaust and depending on where you might live, what you might like to spend or what kind of conditions you encounter, that can dictate which material is gonna work best for your particular build. Now most exhausts you're gonna find are made from steel and we're gonna take a look at three of the most common kinds. First up is aluminized steel. Aluminized steel is the most affordable and budget friendly of the three materials we're looking at here today. Take for example, the MBRP Armor Light dual middle side exit. Aluminized steel is the least expensive of the typical exhaust materials and thus it's gonna fit well into any budget. This material though is well suited to a truck that's not gonna see a lot of salt or moisture as it is the least resistant to rust and corrosion of the three types of metal we're looking at here today. All that to say, while it may not be the highest quality material, Material, aluminized steel is a great way to get a lot of cool sound without having to spend a bundle. I've had an aluminized steel exhaust on one of my trucks for a while now, and actually it's held up pretty well despite living in the Northeast. So if you wanna get something that's gonna sound good, and again, not have to spend a ton of money on it, this might be a great choice for you. If you do live in a climate that's a little less hospitable, something like what we have here in the Northeast or even further up North, it's worth taking a look at one of these stainless options like T409 stainless steel, such as what we find on the proven ground dual exhaust system here. Now T409 stainless is a great middle ground material that offers you solid protection from the elements, but still keeps the price reasonable. If you're not doing serious off-roading or seeing salt and snow all the time, a system made from T409 grade steel is likely to serve your driving style and the conditions quite well. The Proven Ground in particular is actually one of the nicest 409 grade systems I've seen. And you can tell it's a step up in material quality from aluminized steel right out of the box. Now any system made from 409 should last you quite a while and it's gonna weather the elements better than aluminized steel will, though it's still gonna cost you a bit more in most cases. Now 409 system will be more resistant to rust and corrosion and therefore it strikes a great balance between material quality and price. So if you're sticking to a tighter budget, not doing a ton of miles or seeing a ton of adverse conditions, but still want that added protection, a 409 system is not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. It'll have a great sound and a nice long lifespan. 
The top dog of exhaust materials though is T304 stainless, like we find on the Corsa Performance Extreme middle side exit exhaust. This system in particular is completely made from T304 from the flange all the way back to the tip. And T304 is gonna give you the best protection possible against rust and corrosion, and it typically looks the best even right out of the box. Usually it has a more polished finish on the outside. However, since it is the best quality material in the category, it's gonna cost you. Exhaust constructor from T304 tend to run a bit higher price-wise than a system made from 409. But again, it's the quality of the material and the extra protection against rust and corrosion that you're paying for here. And especially if you plan to keep your truck for a long time, springing for a T304 system may not be a bad idea. Now the other aspect you're gonna to wanna to consider is the exhaust layout. And while a large portion of what you might prefer here is the aesthetics of it, there's more to it than just how it looks. The layout of an exhaust can also affect the sound and how much volume you get inside the cab. So let's start with the single side exit, such as the Proven Ground three inch single side exit exhaust. Here's a quick sound clip. Now this is essentially the same layout as your factory exhaust. Because this is an aftermarket exhaust though, it's got quite a bit more volume than your stock one. But despite that, it's not gonna be overpowering inside the cabin as the exhaust is coming out in the stock location, again, behind the passenger side rear wheel. So it's pretty far away from your ears and from the driver's seat. It's about as far away as you can get. Now from an aesthetics perspective, a single side exit like the Proven Ground is a much more subtle update. The look may not give it away, though the sound might. If you're looking for something that's a bit closer to that stock look, one of these is gonna be the ticket. And since this is just replacing your stock system in the stock location, installation is very straightforward as well. It won't even require you to bolt anything else onto the truck. Just drop the old one off and put the new one right in its place. The next step up is the dual side exit. Take for example, the Rough Country dual side exit exhaust. Now this layout is gonna give you a slightly different, more aggressive look than the single side exit, but it doesn't go overboard on interior volume either. Here's a sound clip of the Rough Country for reference. Now, since the pipes exit behind the rear wheels, again, interior volume is not overbearing, despite this particular system being a little on the louder end of the spectrum. And because there is another pipe exiting on the driver's side though, in addition to the one on the passenger side, you are gonna get a bit more volume inside than you would with a comparable single side exit. This setup also looks pretty slick, gives your truck a more aggressive street truck sort of vibe, and it's great if you tow a lot because it's gonna direct the exhaust flow out the sides rather than straight back onto your trailer. Installation for this particular setup will be a bit more involved than a single side exit as you are adding an additional over axle pipe and the hanger that's associated with it. This just means that you're gonna have a few more bolts and clamps to do up as these do tend to be a bolt on mod, so no cutting or anything like that is typically required. That brings us nicely to the dual rear exit layout, such as what you'd find on the MagnaFlow Street Series dual rear exit with black tips. Now this is perhaps the most common aftermarket layout and it gives you that classic old school hot rod type of look with a cool sound to go with it. For reference, here's a quick sound clip. Since this one exits out directly underneath your rear bumper, like the other two we've already looked at, it's not gonna be super obtrusive inside the cabin. In fact, all things being equal, this one will likely translate to the least amount of noise inside since the tips are furthest away from your ears. But it still gives you that cool quintessential look without going too overboard. It's a great choice for a daily driver, but also one that just frankly looks really good. Just like the dual side exit, installation will require a bit more time, but it's not really gonna be any more difficult to actually do. You're just gonna have, again, more piping and an extra hanger or two to bolt on, plus the associated tips. But otherwise, still pretty straightforward. Now the three layouts we've looked at thus far are perhaps to be expected, but now we get to move on to my favorite, the middle side exit, like this MBRP Armor Black system. This one gives you a modern, aggressive look and more sound inside as well. So let's quickly take a listen. It 
Since this one dumps out on the passenger side right at the edge of the cab, you're certainly gonna be able to appreciate the Coyote sound. That is to say, plan on having to turn up your stereo a bit or speak up to hold a conversation because you're gonna be getting more volume in here with this one versus a single side or dual rear exit layout, if only due to the proximity. Since this one is physically closer to the cab and to your ears, you are definitely going to hear it more. But that's precisely why it's my favorite. I think these strike a really good balance between sounding cool and looking absolutely sick. A middle side exit puts me in mind of an old hot rod, a dragster, or even a 60s muscle car. And the 5.0 in the F-150 sounds every bit the part of all of those. Now these tend to be a little bit more involved time-wise than your standard single side exit exhaust, as there is more piping and oftentimes an additional hanger to bolt on, and those pipes tend to be pretty close together to get that cool look. However, like the dual side and dual rear exits we were just looking at, it's not gonna make the install any more difficult, just figure on a little bit more time to get the job done. Now that leaves us with the turndown, represented here by the Flowmaster FlowFX Extreme Turndown System. Now, as you can probably guess, this one is gonna bring the most noise into your cabin area. So here's a quick sound clip for reference. Much like the middle side exit because of proximity, even though this isn't the loudest exhaust we've looked at in this video, is gonna translate to the most sound inside of the cabin because it exits right below your seat under the cabin of the truck. Now, this is the most stealthy looking of the layouts we've touched on here since when the truck is on the ground, you're likely not gonna see it at all. Turndowns tuck up pretty tight to the chassis of the truck underneath, which is great, especially if you're doing some more serious off-roading as it keeps your breakover angle intact and it might even improve ground clearance out back since you don't have a big pipe hanging out there. So your departure angle might actually get a little bit better. Now turndowns also tend to be a bit less expensive than other catback systems since there is just physically less piping to contend with and no tips to worry about. So if you want raucous sound and good ground clearance, this is a great choice that's not gonna blow out your budget. The turndown is also the easiest install of our bunch here as there is no over axle pipe, no tip, no extra hangers or piping to do up. These tend to come in one or two pieces and just bolt in place of the stock muffler and inlet pipe, and that's about the extent of it. They're gonna utilize your stock exhaust hanger locations, and that's really about the extent of the install. I know that is a lot of information to digest, and there's certainly a lot to consider when choosing an exhaust for your F-150. Whatever you choose though, rest assured, it's gonna sound good. It's almost impossible for the Coyote V8 not to make a great noise. Take some time, think about what's important to you in an exhaust, the volume, the material quality, and the layout. There are lots of options out there on our site for these five liter trucks, so you've got plenty of choices. And if you find yourself suffering from analysis paralysis, you can always refer back to some of the examples here in the video, or give our awesome customer service reps a call. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know if there's a topic you'd like to see us break down next as well. We've got lots more content, review, and install videos coming your way all the time as well, so make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm Jake, thank you so much for watching, and as always, for all things F-150, be sure to keep it right here at americantrucks.com. Oh.